Today's video is an item I picked up on Let Go before it became Offer Up, right before the pandemic. And um, I just started a project, the Boy Scouts uh, hatchet from the 1940s, and um, I'll be working on that and have that video out to you guys sooner than later. So I had this thing sitting in the garage and I figured, hey, let's make a video on it, something I wanted to do. I uh, just haven't got around to it. So this is a Delta scroll, scroll, scroll saw. And let me tell you a little bit more about so it. So what I love about this saw is it actually has the original paperwork. As you can see, they're dated 11085, and I'll show you what that looks like and take you through it. Um, I love when you know the lineage of an item that you bought, and this was in a defense contractor's uh, fact. I don't know if it was a factory or facility where they made optics for the U.S. government. Um, and look at the stand it came on. A super high quality, heavy gauge, nice casters on it. I think the gentleman I bought it from, he was a retired Marine who worked at this defense contractor. And um, he said he put, I believe, the new casters on it at some point. And he said he bought it from the company. Um, they sold it to him after they didn't use it anymore or need it anymore. And um, he got a really good deal on it. He didn't tell me what he paid for it. But he had it listed for $150 on Let Go. And I wasn't willing to go that high. But I know I saw a Scout Craft, a video not that long ago, where he talked about these. Um, as you can see here, it's adjustable. The table... It's got a great um, heavy weight to it, which I'll tell you the story in a minute. But um, yeah, Scout Crafter did a video on one of these a while ago, and he mentioned how useful they are. And I said, if I could get one for the right price, I will definitely pick one up. And when I saw he had it reduced to $90, I shot him a note and uh, made it happen. So here's a funny story about how heavy this thing was. I went to lift it to put it into my trunk and oh! But I pretended like it wasn't that heavy and I just manned up and uh, lifted it and carried it off because that's what men do, even though my nuts were on the driveway. Let's get back to this review. Everything on this thing is complete. I mean, it even came with the long hex key that you need to access all the hex bolts that are hard to get to for changing the blade. It even has the original pin that is used to go in this little hole here um, to stabilize the tightening of the blade. It's got a hose connection here uh, that is used um, for you know sucking the dust if you wanna hook it up to a vacuum system. The only thing that is not working is the hose here. And he had told me that. He thinks there's a leak somewhere in the hose. I'll have to figure it out. I don't hear it leaking, which is a little bit of a concern. So I don't know if it's not blowing air and that's to blow air so you can see the line um, that you're cutting. And then the other piece is this piece here. And this looks like it's pretty worn. And my understanding is, and I know just enough about this to be dangerous because <laughs> I basically fired it up and started using it without knowing much about it, snapped the blade. Um, and then I took out the manual, uh, which I'll take you through. Uh, and I learned just enough for, and read just the parts I needed to know to cut a piece of wood. And I'll, sh I'll give you a, um, a little bit of a, I'll cut a piece of wood here in a minute. Uh, but this, my understanding is to, it kind of protects the blade uh, not protects it, but keeps it from going back too far, and you got to set that so it has a little bit of play, but just the right amount, and then obviously this I learned is to kind of stabilize your work, so you set your work there, and um, to just so it lays on it nicely, and overall it works pretty good. The digital readout goes up to, goes up to 2,000 strokes per minute. And I mean, she could go really slow. So I'm assuming this is a pretty quality machine, being that it was in a factory and probably cost a lot of money back in the mid 80s. Uh, just as you saw the weight of it and the quality of it, they probably definitely don't make stuff like this anymore. Uh, so I think I got a really good deal for 90 bucks. I just hope it's not outdated technology, but I can't imagine that it is. I'm assuming a scroll saw is pretty much a scroll saw. And here is all the paperwork that came with it. I mean, that is cool. Look at this here. The original ownership warranty card that the company had out of Easton, PA. Uh, it's right outside of Philly. And then I just love these old manuals. And look at the pictures in there. Just love that this is all original. I love the pictures. They were really made to give you 
good directions prior to everything being online and there being links. It gives you step-by-step -step for everything. The adjustments. And like I said, a matter of minutes, I figured out how to do this um, and not cut my finger off. So that was real helpful. And there's the, the guide there that you used to, that I pointed out to lock the pin in. So there's a lot of sun coming into the garage to give me a little bit of a glare there. Um, everything you would need for precise cutting all the way down to um, the maintenance and breaking down of the machine. And that's what I plan on doing maybe next is looking into um, if I need to do any maintenance to it. I'm assuming there might be some things in there that need to be oiled or maybe just some bearings. I'll have to do some homework on that. Look at this, even the saw blades, sizes and recommendations for usage. I just love that. Safety card that came with it another oh there you go there's the installation information that it was all to specs and signed off from delta as it was shipped to them all the original packaging i thought that was so cool and to me that is just as cool as the saw and here I traced out the handle, and this is on a quality half inch piece of oak. So um, it makes pretty quick work of a solid hard wood like oak. And I put a bright red trace on it so I could kind of see what I'm doing. And this is real speed here. And this is literally the second piece of wood I'm ever cutting uh, with this machine. And you can see I'm a little scared here, <laughs> just being safe. It's the first time, a uh, second time I'm really using it. So I'm going a little slower, really being cautious to keep my fingers out of the way. Uh, but you can see it for my second time using it, not really a difficult machine or tool to use. Trying to stay a little bit outside of the line. And you can see the dust blowing off there. That's me blowing. And I really got to figure out how to get that hose working. And I'm hoping it's just a, a, a problem with the line and not that there's something wrong with it, that it's not functioning properly. Because for me to use this machine and for it to be um, effective, I'm going to need that to be working. Here I'm feeding the wood in on an angle and I was curious to see how the blade would catch and if I could follow the contour pretty easily and it, it absolutely did. It was easily fed in there. What I learned is you could just kind of pause, reposition and keep cutting. And here I'm getting a little bit more comfortable and I'm moving a little bit quicker and I'm actually getting a little bit closer to the red line. And this is the part of the handle that had a little bit more of a curve so i had to be a little bit more cautious in staying um, on that line Well, with some practice, I got a lot more comfortable and it became a little easier. I definitely didn't want to get too close to the line because I'm going to have to figure out a way to sand all the contours of this uh, to make it into that handle for the hatchet. But you'll have to stay tuned for my video on that, um, which will probably be out in another week or so, I'm hoping. Um, I ordered some pins that are going to have to go into there. Um, and I just also wanted to share that these blades from Harbor Freight... There were a few dollars. I want to say I paid about $4 for them. I used a coupon on them. They're made in Taiwan. And I had to knock the pin out, if I didn't mention that earlier, because these are pinned. And it seemed to work very well. So, guys, please like and subscribe if you like tool hauls, if you like tool reviews, if you like tool restorations. Getting close to that 1,000 subscriber mark, so could really use your help there. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. And remember, the world has enough guys, so be a man. And if you'd like a Tom Gunn channel sticker, just shoot me an email at TomGunnTools at gmail.com and I'll send you a couple of these stickers for your workshop or your toolbox. Thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe.